Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are going to be designing and making a makeup brush holder. This is going to be a two-part tutorial. Now, it should go without saying that being a fashion and costume designer, I absolutely have a love for makeup, <laughs> which comes with a lot of brushes. And I have found quite a few ways to store my brushes in my home, but on the go, I only seem to find a whole bunch of these big huge kits and sometimes they're a little bit too much for what I'm looking for. You know, sometimes I want just a little bag to throw in my purse when I'm on the go. So I have come up with two different versions that are slightly different from each other of a little makeup brush holder that will protect my little expensive makeup brushes when I'm on the go. So I'm going to go ahead and share these two versions with you in this video and let's jump right in. So first things first, I went ahead and drew out kind of an idea of what I wanted on a piece of paper before I started, which I don't always do that, but it is good to get in the habit of it just so you can kind of refer back and see um, how you change your mind about certain design aspects and it's just always a good idea. And you'll have to pardon my filthy brushes, but I just ran to my purse and dug out all the makeup brushes that I currently carry in my purse in my makeup kit. So these are the ones that I tend to take with me everywhere, just in case. And in all honesty, I don't wear makeup every single day, but I do have quite a big makeup collection um, when you're in the fashion and cosplay industry. It comes in handy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw out kind of a rough outline of how big I want the bag to be and I think this bag measured right about nine and a half inches by I believe eight and a half inches and what I'm doing is just kind of doing a little bit of design background to see how I want the brush to sit in the bag and how I want the fabric down at the bottom to hold the brushes in and elastic across the top, you know, that sort of thing. Now you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing, but I'm giving you an idea of how I go about designing. Now I do have this other pattern over here that shows a makeup bag that this little um, foldy makeup brush thing will fit in, but that will be for another video. So let's talk fabric. Big surprise here, I was shopping and I found some really cute Wonder Woman fabric. <laughs> and I thought this would be cute for something and I wasn't sure until I thought of this idea. So I picked up a yard of each of these fabrics and then I found, I love pleather. If you've been around my channel for a minute, I absolutely adore pleather. So I found this kind of crimson red pleatherette that um, I was thinking might be cute for the outside of the bag and maybe for the part that covers the base of the brushes. And then I also found this that speaks to my deep dark black soul. Oh, so gothic. <laughs> so I thought this would be a cute one that we could do as well. And I think we're gonna go with the red with both of these fabrics. So, the next thing I want to show you is an interfacing. Now this is a very heavy duty felted interfacing. I use this on all of my makeup bags just because it's very stiff. Um, it might be kind of hard for some people to work with, but it protects my makeup and my makeup brushes, so I love it. So here I want to show you guys laying out my pattern on my fabric. Now there, it is very important how you lay out your pattern onto your fabric. We're gonna use this block right here as my center visual piece on my product. So I'm lining up in between this line over here and this line over here. And you might wanna move your pattern back and forth just so you can check and make sure that the pattern that you're getting on your whatever project it is that you're working looks good visually. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I will always go through and look at the pattern on my fabric to see where I can lay the pattern out to make it look visually the best. 
So the next step, we're using this stuff called Vinyl Fuse, and this actually is a um, iron-on vinyl that you put over the top of a regular fabric to make it a vinyl fabric. And if you've never used this before, this stuff is awesome for the top of cottons, just to make them a little bit more heavy duty. Now with this inside piece, I'm only gonna come to about here, covering it in vinyl on this one, just because that bottom part's gonna be where the end of your brushes are, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna need to be vinylized. Vinylized. <laughs> Me and my lyrics. Anyway, so what this protectant is also going to do is going to keep the inside of your fabric clean. Now, you know makeup brushes can get pretty dirty, um, and I'm not gonna lie, I've let mine kind of get dirty from time to time, and you don't want this cute fabric on the background to end up getting destroyed, because it would get destroyed really quick if you didn't do this. So what we're going to do, now we've already ironed this piece of fabric, so it has no wrinkles in it. And I'm going to grab my pattern. And you can see where that lower edge is at right there. That's the distance that we're not covering up with the vinyl. So I'm just gonna leave the pattern right there as a guide so I know roughly how far down to put the vinyl fuse. And this vinyl fuse is kind of intricate, but I'm going to show you the best of my ability how to use it. So I'm trying to line this up on my table so I can see how far down to actually go with the vinyl fuse. Such a perfectionist. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take the vinyl off of it, and you'll see the back side of this is kind of sticky. Not really sticky, but it's more tacky. And you just go ahead and lay it down on the top of your fabric and smooth it out. And I don't know if this is in the instructions or not, but what I like to do after I put the little sticky film on the top of the fabric is take a, I mean, if you have a, just like a roll, the rest of the roll and kind of smooth out the vinyl. That kind of helps it lay a little bit more flat and gets any air bubbles out of it. And so you'll see, now I did cut the vinyl fuse out a little bit bigger than the pattern piece. And the reason that I do that is because you have to use the back of that, that paper to face toward the front of the vinyl to iron it on. Because if you just put the iron over the top of this, um, you would probably ruin your iron. <laughs> and your fabric and everything you're working on. So um, I like to cut it out just ever so slightly bigger than my pattern piece so that way that the paper is bigger than the project. And then what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll cut away the extra vinyl so that way it doesn't stick to um, my drop cloth that I have on my ironing board. And on this one, I just covered down to the brush area, and on the other one I did, I covered the whole piece. So, they're both slightly different, but, you know, it is what it is. So here is the piece of paper that I took that vinyl off of. And you can see that the other side of it is kind of smooth, and it has kind of a, a tacky kind of feeling to it, but I wanna say it's like silicone paper or something. So what you're going to do is you're going to face that toward your vinyl. So you're going to take the vinyl off, flip it over, and then put this face toward the vinyl. And then you're going to iron. I do iron on a very hot setting, and I let my fabric cool before I pull the paper off. And voila! And just make sure that you follow the instructions on your vinyl information. And here is the other side that I did. And like I said, I just covered the whole thing in vinyl on this one. So pretty. So next thing, we took some of that felt interfacing and I cut out a piece for both of these. And it has adhesive on both sides of it. And um, because of that, we're just going to iron it 
to the, the decorative side of the fabric for right now. So I'll go ahead and I'll put these papers over the top of it just so I don't screw my iron up or my iron board on my project. And now we are going to go ahead and come in with this, oh, isn't that beautiful? This red just really makes the roses and the Wonder Woman pop. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from one end to the other and it looks like 10 inches long and it looks like we're gonna take it about three inches wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double up the 10 inches in width because we need that for um, doing the little lump area to hold the brushes in because you don't want it to be flat against your your table or else that'd be hot mess. So we're cutting out six inches wide by 20 to 21 inches long. And then we're gonna cut that in half. And that is going to be for both bags. And like I said, this is gonna be a two part. I'm going to go ahead and get on over to the sewing machine and that part will come later on this week. So stay tuned for assembly of the makeup brush bag. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you leave. Follow me on all other social media, and I will see you guys in the next video. Toodles!